All right, number 40, we made it the last question on our practice test, and we are being asked to sketch the graph of the rational function, and we've been given f of x equals x plus 2 over x squared minus 9. All right, well, just like before with number 39, let's go ahead and find our vertical asymptotes uh, by setting our denominator x squared minus 9 equal to 0 and solving for x. All right, in this case, we're going to add 9 to both sides. That'll give us x squared equals positive 9. We want x all by itself, so let's take the square root of both sides. Remember, when you create your own square root, you have to remember that plus and minus. And so we end up with x equals plus and minus, and radical 9 comes out as 3. All right, so we got our vertical asymptotes. We're saying x equals plus and minus 3. Let's go ahead and graph those. So positive 1, positive 2, positive 3. Oops. All right, so there's 1. Let me erase those and try a little better. And negative 3, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Okay. Looks good. And let's go ahead now and find a horizontal asymptote for this function. So we're going to take a look at our degrees. The numerator has a degree, the highest degree of 1, and the denominator, the highest degree, is 2. We know based on what we looked at earlier in the practice test that when the denominator has a larger degree than the numerator, uh, the horizontal asymptote is automatically... Uh, 0, y equals 0. And what color did I use? I think I used green, didn't I? So y equals 0. So let's go ahead and graph that. All right, so there's our horizontal asymptote. Now let's go ahead and just like before with number 39, uh, we're going to choose some x values and graph this function. In this case, notice that we really have three sections. We have a left side, right? The left side will look like something. We have the middle, right? We've got something going on in here. And we have the right-hand side. Something's going to be going on on the right-hand side. So let's take a look and see. If the asymptote here on the left, this vertical asymptote, was x equals negative 3, we want to choose x values that are to the left, smaller than negative 3. And again, these are really arbitrary, um, but you will find that because there are three sections here, you know, this left side, this middle, and the right-hand side, you can choose uh, x values um, that are, are, are going to make a big difference in the, what the corresponding y value is, um, meaning uh, you could move the x value very, a uh, very small amount and watch the y value change dramatically, meaning uh, let's go ahead and if we choose, let's choose a value that's really close to x equals negative 3. So if we chose uh, x equals negative 3.01, for example, uh, that's really close to negative 3. So we're talking just to the left of uh, this vertical asymptote. And then we can choose, how about negative 3.1 and uh, how about negative 4? And again, what I was saying was I would be willing to bet when we pull up the calculator and find out what these corresponding y values are that because we didn't even change our x value all that much, um, but I would be willing to bet that there's going to be a big jump in the y values uh, from negative uh, 3.01 to negative 3.1. And that tends to happen when you have multiple sections. So the more sections you have, you're going to see uh, really big jumps in your y values, generally speaking. All right, how about some uh, x values in the middle here? And again, these are all arbitrary. You can play around with these in your calculator to see what gives you a nice shape uh, uh, for the graph. So if we choose, for example, now we're talking about uh, choosing x values inside here. So between negative 3 and positive 3. So we can choose something just to the right of negative 3. So how about negative 2 point? Um, about 9, 9. That's literally just to the right of uh, x equals negative 3. How about we choose 0 right in the middle? And how about mm, 2.9? Sounds good. So that's, again, very close to x equals 3 now. And we'll see what kind of shape we have going on in here. 
And then lastly, uh, again, all arbitrary, let's choose something just to the right of positive 3. So how about uh, 3.1? Uh, I don't know, 3.5, we'll see what that gives us. And let's jump a little bit and we'll try five and see what that looks like. Again, these are uh, literally, they're arbitrary. I, I randomly chose these and we'll see what happens. All right, so we pull up our calculator. We're gonna go to our Y equals screen. Let's input our function. So in this case, make sure you use parentheses, uh, X plus two divided by x squared minus 9 close parentheses again make sure that your table set uh, your independent variable is set to ask so hit the second button table set make sure that the independent variable is set to ask so that when you click on second and table and you're given the table we can uh, input various x values uh, automatically otherwise you won't be able to input X values you'll you'll already have a list created by the calculator all right so let's see negative 3.01 so negative 3.01 gives us negative 16.81 I'm gonna round here so negative 16.8 let's see how about oops let's see um, negative 3.1 gives us negative 1.8 so there we go uh, what I was saying was notice that our x value didn't decrease all by all that much we went from negative 3.01 to negative 3.1 so a slight decrease but look at how much our y value jumped pretty uh, pretty significantly all right and then let's see how about negative 4 is negative 2.8 all right negative point two. 8.5 I think it was so I guess we'll round that to, to 9 all right and again these were all arbitrary you can you can choose um, oops you can choose uh, these X values really uh, at your discretion and see what the corresponding Y values are you want to make sure that you get enough change in the Y value so that you can see what's happening with the graph but uh, otherwise uh, go ahead and choose X values uh, at your will. So let's see what negative 2.99 gives us. 16.5. Uh, let's see what 0 gives us. Oh, it's already in there. Negative 0.22 repeating. And lastly, let's see what 2.9 gives us. Negative 8.3. All right, and finally, let's go ahead. We can take a look at 3.1, gives us 8.3. Take a look at 3.5, 1.7, and lastly, I skipped a little, and went up to five, and then got us to 0.4, so pretty close to zero there. All right, we've got some points. Let's see if we can figure out what this graph looks like. So at negative 3.01, we're at almost negative 17. So here's negative 3. So we're going just past that, and we're going all the way down to almost negative 17, which is well off the graph. So we'll say somewhere down there. All right, negative 3.1, negative uh, 1.8. So again, really close uh, to that asymptote. And now we're going down about there and negative four and almost at zero so about there and if we continued if we cho chose another x value we're going to get remember infinitely close to this green horizontal asymptote so even if we had chosen negative five for example we're going to get really close to that uh, uh, horizontal asymptote so we know that this graph is going to get really close to that green asymptote and really close to that red asymptote uh, to look something like that. All right, how about the middle now? Negative 2.99, so just to the right of that asymptote, that horizontal, uh, vertical red asymptote there, and we're going up to 16 and a half, but again, that's well off the screen, so somewhere around there. At zero, we're just at about a negative quarter, 
and then almost at three we're at negative 8.3 so one two three four five six seven eight and just past it so something like that so we can see that we've got an s shape going on here so again this middle line is getting infinitely close to these red asymptotes these uh, vertical asymptotes but they're never quite touching all right and lastly we have 3.1 so just to the right and uh, 8.3 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8.3 about there three and a half 1.7 about there and 5.4 about there and so again we can see the general shape of what's going on here our graph is going to get infinitely close to this red vertical asymptote come down and then swing along and get infinitely close to that green horizontal asymptote but never quite touch let's see if our graph looks uh, anything like what the calculator will graph for us and we can see that it does and of course remember this the screen that we have on this calculator um, is not HD right and so uh, when we start to get really close to asymptotes whether they're vertical or horizontal uh, the calculator really can't draw uh, those lines and so it looks like it disappears but it really is there it really does go on it's just the calculator uh, the pixels on the screen aren't able to to differentiate and so they just disappear but we can see that we've got a graph that looks uh, similar and so we are good to go with number 40.